So now what we want to jump into next is we're going to we're going to show another normal uh, thing that happens with newer shooters where they're scared of getting beat, like out here on Station Four, or Stations Three, Four, and Five. So they start leaving a little early. They end up way in front of the target, and then they end up having to bleed off some lead to try to get back to it, or they end up missing in front. Let's go ahead and show that demonstration next. Pull. Here, guys, we see that as soon as I said pull, I started moving right away, and we check out the simple panoramic view of this shot. You see that there's the, the gun started moving like right away. There was no target really in the frame until the last second because I was slowing down. And when you look at the track feature, it also shows you the same thing. Leading up to the shot, slowing down, slowing down, and at the last second tried to save it by pushing the gun. Now, again, those are these are some of the common things that you're gonna see, you know, when you're when you're shooting either by yourself or youth coaches when you're trying to help others, you're not gonna see perfect shots every time. So when you see things like this, you got to figure out what's going on. And in this case, this is a this is a perfect example of the shooter leaving early, and the pull away shot or the or the swing through shot indicates that the shooter is leaving a little late in the beginning. Both uh, or both scenarios, you've got to fix the start. You got to figure out what's going on at the beginning of the shot. Is it the hold point that's the issue? The look point? Is the shooter not reacting fast enough? Those are the things that you have to diagnose and jump into. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a shot where the shooter is in perfect position, but just doesn't elevate quite up to it. Oops, I got one in there. Pull. So again, guys, when we look at this simple panoramic shot, we see the target come out. The gun is in pretty good position for the majority of the way, but the left hand simply did not elevate up to the target. Now, this brings up an interesting conversation because if you are track, if you see your shooter or yourself, you're tracking the target really well, you're getting a really good look at it, and you feel like your left hand is elevating towards that target flight line, but you're continuously under the target, that goes back to a point of impact, like we talked about on Station 7. This is another great station to test to see if that elevation is good. Low seven is a great indicator. Station four is also a good indicator because in this particular case, if this were to happen over and over again, and you feel like you're making a really good move to the target, you're getting a good look, and that left hand, or for left-handed shooters, that right hand is elevating up towards that target line, but you're continuously shooting underneath the target, there's a good chance that that point of impact, again, is set a little too low, and we need to go raise that comb, try to raise it an eighth of an inch, and then try some more and see if it fixes it. Now, another common thing that we'll see out here is the shooter will be tracking the target, and right at the last second, you'll feel or you'll see the shooter, they'll start to push up a little too steep where they're actually covering the target as they squeeze. Now, the idea is we want to see what we're shooting at, guys. We don't want the barrel to be in the way. We want to be able to make a good move and see the target. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that would look like when the shooter is actually tracking it well, but they actually let it disappear behind the gun. Let's go ahead and take a look at the simple panoramic on that. Pull. Another really common mistake for the newer shooters is stopping the gun right at the end. Now, as a coach, that's very easy to see, but as a shooter, when you're, when you're behind the gun in the heat of the moment, that's very difficult to detect sometimes. So let's go ahead and let's show, let's show you what that looks like as well. Pull. Try again. The center of the pattern was to behind. The left. That's correct. So in this particular case here, when we look at the simple panoramic view, we'll see that the target comes out a match speed right away. I'm coming up to it, but right at the moment I pull the trigger, the gun starts slowing down to where it just about stops. So behind the gun in that instance, everything looks correct, but the gun speed is decelerating. So even though everything looks, looks and feels correct, 
since the gun's slowing down, you're gonna miss behind it every single time. So what you have to be sure of and when you're looking at this panoramic view and also the track view will show a good, good uh, indicator, be a good indicator for this as well, is that from when, when I, as I was coming up to the target, you could start to see that I'm losing speed but you know what? The target doesn't look at us and go, oh, I feel sorry for this guy. It's going to lose speed too. No, it's going to keep going. So we got to make sure that we finish strong. Guys, you have here, we talked about leads here where we're saying, hey, you got to point the shotgun. And that's what the, this device that it's really good for is instead of trying to figure out measurements, you can focus more on making a good turn with the target, getting the gun speed correct, looking at it and pointing the gun. And if you don't point the gun far enough in front, it's going to tell you where you miss. You're going to miss, you know, to the left of high houses or to the right of low houses. You're behind it. Okay. But instead of sitting there trying to figure out measurements, you can just point a little further and a little further in front. Or if you're too far in front, you can throttle back and just bring it a little close to the target. But you don't have to look at the gun and the target to figure that out because that's what the shot tracker is doing for you. So you can actually focus on the correct technique and getting your, your body mechanics correct, making sure you're getting a good turn and keeping your eyes focused on the targets. Now, last but not least, before we move over to talk a little bit about eye dominance, I wanna show you how this thing works on a double. It's pretty cool. Paul. Please pick it up. Please good pick shot. It. Shot two. Good shot. Yeah. And that's how you shoot a perfect pair at four. It shows both. Yeah. Yes, it backs up. <gasps> yes, it shows the second shot. It, remember, it's a second before. I've never seen this before. This is awesome. Okay. Okay, so guys, so here we see on the, if we look at the, the double, and we go to the second shot and we do the simple panoramic, what we'll see is how I acquired and shot the first target, made a good transition to the second one towards the middle of the field, and then came back and shot the second target pretty much right where I shot the first target, executing a flawless double here at Station 4.